Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Ooh. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to violently knock out all memory of this god-awful movie I just saw. A kid in King Arthur's wart. A kid in King Louis's cart. A cat in B. Arthur's cooch. There we go, no memory at all. I can't talk about a movie if I can't even remember the title. So, it looks like I don't have to review A Kid in King Arthur's Court. Damn it! There are movies that are bad, movies that are sinful, and movies that rape the fabric of space and time. A Kid in King Arthur's Court is all of those, with a bucket of shame and a mountain full of writer's diarrhea. And unless I can quickly repress the memory of this movie, it starts the kid from American Pie. Fuck. It looks like I have to review it. So it starts off with Merlin looking an awful lot like Nick Nolte's mugshot, calling upon his magic to bring a brave knight to Camelot to save his kingdom. Oh, great spirit of light, bring me that knight. No, no, I said bring me a knight, not show me cutscenes from Rookie of the Year. So we see our main character named Calvin. And no, he's not a ten-year-old with an imaginary tiger, but he's pretty much on the same brain length. We see him at a baseball game where it turns out he's not exactly the best player. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Right one. Right two. Why did I sign this kid up again? Oh yeah, because I'm doing his mother. Hit the ball! Keep your eye on the ball, Cal! Oh, and hitting it would be nice too. Hasta la vista, Fuller. You do not have copyright on that catchphrase! I eat you! I eat you all! After refusing to hit the ball three times in a row, Calvin is forced to take his seat, where his teammates rightfully make fun of him. Fuller, give me my bat. As you wish, your highness. Hey, act like the ball isn't gonna rape you, and then you can talk back to the players. Well, it looks like even the Earth isn't fond of our hero, as the ground literally devours him and swallows him whole. Oh, I sure hope there's no baseballs down there. We're then transported to what looks like a fucking Ren Fair as the sky shits out our hero and drops him onto some unconvincing medieval costumes. Here! Be careful! I think there's a baseball in there! It'll kill your family! It turns out that the kid stopped a robbery as precious treasures were being stolen from a very frail and pudgy looking King Arthur. Find the brave man who followed the Black Knight. I want to thank him personally. Please. <laughs> thank thee, Lord Belasco. Pleasure, Your Highness. Did I mention that I'm the villain? No, because I don't have to! So Calvin is captured by the guards as they're told that he should be brought before the king. Take him to Camelot. Aren't we in Camelot? He hello? So they take him to King Arthur to decide whether or not Calvin is a threat. But they quickly discover the only threat he poses is to their lunches. Hey guys, where's the boys' room? I've been holding it since the third inning. Where are we going? Hey, don't I get a phone call or something? <laughs> it's funny because there are no phones in medieval times. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of jokes like that. So Arthur asks the boy a series of questions to find out more about him. Now tell me, what do they call the boy? Oh, lots of things. Jerk off, dickweed, bane of my existence. I have a whole list. But the boy seems to amuse Arthur and his two daughters that... Wait a minute, when did Arthur have two daughters? And is one of them Kate Winslet? Where did you say you were from? Holy shit, it is! It's Kate Winslet! May I suggest for our honored visitor from Reseda a fortnight of training with Master Kane? Don't try to class up this movie, lady. It's not worth it. Your Highness? Yeah? I don't mean to butt in here, but where's the round table? Round table. You know, where you and your knights have your meetings. It's round, so you gotta look everybody in the eye. No favorites. Everybody's equal. Everybody's equal? <laughs> Fascinating idea. Oh, so it's because of Calvin that we have the infamous round table. I see. That must have been mentioned in the Lost Scrolls. Too dumb for history. I think it also mentioned why Arthur always wears a lobster bib, but I could be wrong. So Calvin gets friendly with the king's daughter, Princess Katie, where she shows him a secret passageway because apparently all guest rooms have secret passageways. She shows him Merlin's old quarters where all the swords, armor, spells, and everything else that would have made this movie a lot cooler are stored. That's just father's old sword. Old sword? That's Excalibur. My, that does know a lot. I watch a lot of CNN. <laughs> Yeah, because they're always talking about that kind of stuff on CNN. Bailo plan in danger. The economy is getting worse. Did you know that King Arthur had a sword named Excalibur? More at 11. After Katie leaves, we see Calvin come across a mystical toilet that apparently holds Merlin for some reason. What are you doing here, boy? Stand aside so I may see my great warrior. 
Ooh, this is awkward. I hate to tell you this, but I'm the only one here. Something has gone horribly wrong. I think you can tell that just by the title. What am I doing here? I brought you here to save Camelot. Arthur is in trouble. His kingdom has been shattered. Plots are going nowhere. Scenes just prattle on and die. We need to do something. So even though they both share the correct notion that Calvin is a loser, he's shown into the training room where they tried to make him a true Daniel Craig? He's in this too? Good God, this is like that desperate porno a celebrity does before he becomes famous. Only more painful and far less entertaining. But it's not just Craig. Princess Katie, it turns out, is a master of swordplay too. Oh yeah, because they were all doing that at the time. Women were always taught how to use the sword in the Dark Ages. That's why they were considered just as equal as men. This movie's as historically accurate as a Medieval Times restaurant. There were no utensils in Medieval Times, hence there are no utensils at Medieval Times. Would you like a refill on that Pepsi? God, these things are a lot heavier than they look on TV. TV. Yes, he comes from the 90s. Isn't it funny? Ha! Oh, it smells like something died in here. Uh, someone did die in there. There. Whoa! Come on, spam a lot have more dignity than this. But as Calvin discovers, he's not exactly the world's greatest fighter. Message for you, son. Oh, uh, guard, turn, carry, dodge, speed, uh, thrust. I cannot believe I fell for the oldest trick in the book. Then again, since I'm here, maybe it's the newest trick in the book. Wow, I can't believe I just heard the lamest joke in the world. Or, since I'm here, the lamest joke in history. Meanwhile, we see Winslet do princessy things like picking flowers and turning down old creepy guys who happen to have the royal hats for her. You are the most exquisite flower in this garden, princess. There is one major difference between the garden flowers and myself, Lord Velasco. Mm. A rose will prick you, but I will do far worse. I can't believe I'm going to be doing Hamlet after this. After that, Calvin asks one of the local blacksmiths if he can make him a pair of rollerblades. Yeah, I'm not kidding, a pair of rollerblades. By the circle builders themselves. Wait, the who? By the circle builders themselves. What the hell does that mean? The circle builders? Is that like some sort of medieval rock band? I mean, while you're at it, why don't you say, by the square makers of Antioch, or by the triangle trimmers of Trickle Street, or by the power of the parallelogram powders. Ooh, we're really mystical now. So Calvin and Katie go rollerblading through King Arthur's castle. Wow, that did sound as stupid as I thought it would. As they work their way back down to the training room, where Calvin, it finally seems, is getting the hang of actually hitting something. But Lord Balding Skunk is determined to make a mockery of Calvin's achievements. Well, if you've had enough of fighting wooden men, how do you fancy taking on a real man for a change? Look out! He might have a baseball! No! Oh, Rain the crystal balls! You will use your belt to hang yourself with, because when I come for you, it'll be worse. Far, far worse. So in order to celebrate his ball-busting victory, Katie and Calvin share a meal together. Beautiful, but what is it? Big Mac. I met some chicken and nuggets, but I didn't see any raccoon testicles lying around. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it just hit me. I may never see my family again. My friends are gone and I'm in a time period. I will never survive it. Oh well. So Calvin and Katie go riding in the forest when they spot Winslet and Craig doing... Whoa! Hot British sex! I never thought the three words would go together, but whoa! But as those two share their love for one another, Calvin tries his hand at this romance thing as well. You deceived me! I was impertinent! You are a clever lad. I think she likes me. Yeah, that's why she kicked me. Most women who like me kick me. I'm a ladies' man. Yeah. However, it turns out that Katie is in love. But judging by this scene, we're not quite sure to who. You are in love, little one. Don't be silly. I can't hide anything from you, can I? I know it all too well myself. Are you talking about Calvin, or...? Does it always hurt this much? Mm. Sometimes it hurts much worse. Am I the only one finding this kind of hot? What's to become of our family, Sarah? 
I know not. But I will always look after thee. Wait, no! Go back! Go back! I want to see him get it on! Farewell, my boy. Oh, son of a bitch! We're right in the middle of hot medieval lesbianism! One of the few things I want to see before I die, and then all of a sudden it cuts to those two putzes? I mean, come on! What kind of sexual eroticism can we possibly get out of those two? Never swallow. Never swallow. All right, so there's no more hot British lesbian sex. Wow, four words I never thought I'd hear together. But Calvin does manage to get the blacksmith to make him a bike. Yep, first it was the rollerblades, now it's a bike. What is it? It's a mountain bike. For God's sakes, how many groundbreaking technologies can that blacksmith make? What is that? It's a Ford Focus with anti-lock brakes, standard CD, MP3 player, and new electronic stability control. Neat, huh? So the two of them decide to ride their bike and go on a picnic. Here we get to see editing at its worst, as it literally just dissolves in every single cut. Why the hell are they doing that? You usually dissolve just to show a passing of time. I mean, is that what's going on? Is time going by as they're talking? I never knew my mother that well. I heard she was a prostitute with crabs. Funny, in seventh grade, I knew I had to wear diapers for the rest of my life, so it took a little adjusting and sometimes I just hit the wall and cry out of nowhere, and I have no idea why. So, okay, these two are supposedly falling in love, if you can buy that, as Calvin says goodbye to his sweetheart at the door. I haven't had this much fun in my whole life. I know you're worried about your father. Me too. I promise, I'll do everything I can to keep Belasco from screwing things up. You know, you're right next to the door, kid. You really can't hear her struggling and mumbling for help. Princess. Help me! I haven't had this much fun in my whole life. Call the dudes! I know you're worried about your father. I'm worried about me, you moron! I guess that's all. Don't leave me! Oh, yeah. Help! You're a great kisser. Oh my god, what an idiot! So yeah, the brave warrior princess who has been taught sword fighting all her life suddenly can't use her fighting techniques on a couple of guards. This is a very common case I like to call the dumbass in distress disorder. This usually involves a strong, totally independent female who for the first two acts of the movie kicks everybody's ass and is a mighty force to reckon with. But then, near the end of the movie, oh, as the third act's getting closer, I suddenly find myself becoming dumber and less competent. And now suddenly I'm in danger! Oh, if only there was a man around to save me, they never seem to succumb to this strategically contrived illness. So they sneak her out under the cover of daylight for some reason, as Lord Eyeshadow tells Wenslet that he has her sister, and the only way he'll let her go is if she marries him. You cannot force me to marry you! Well, if you do not consent, then Princess Catherine will die. You see what I just did there? I made fun of your acting! <laughs> because I'm the one who will have the career after this movie! I was the villain in True Lies! When would you ever be in a James Cameron movie? <laughs> oh god, I'm funny. So Lord Gatecloak plans to pin the whole kidnapping on Calvin. But Calvin escapes as he tells the king what's going on and pleads with him to help. She's been taken prisoner. Well, it's impossible. Velasco's orders. But I would trust Velasco with my life. You've been faked out, played for a sucker, your chain has been royally pulled. And other things I'm sure children my age say. So the king decides to help him out as Calvin goes and hides. Sorry, Your Highness. I have some terrible news. Never mind me, I'm just a moving hunk of armor yes. with a kid's face for a crotch. Without the waste of my time, find the boy. Bring me his head on a pike. I'm acting! So Calvin thinks up a plan. He and the king dress like peasants so they can break into Lord Ponytail's fortress and save Katie. Yeah, yeah, that's a good plan. Or, pfft, seeing how he's the king, maybe he could just say arrest that bastard, bring my daughter back, and have this all fixed in two minutes! But the movie decides this is more exciting, as the king discovers he's not as welcome in his kingdom as he thought. They find out you're the king, you're dead meat. I don't understand. Let's boogie. Cause that's what kids say, right? They say boogie, get down, do the hammer time, funky monkey, I swear I'm cool, please tell me I'm cool. <sighs> ah yes, again, this fearsome warrior princess can battle with a bow, arrow, and sword, but is just so afraid of those pesky dirty rats, ew! Meanwhile, our two heroes break into the fortress to save the day. 
quiet. I think I hear my daughter pushing out. Oh, I knew you'd come. You wouldn't happen to have a key, would you? I have something better, lad. A father's love for a daughter. Oh! Well, I have a boy's horniness for a hot chick. Let's see if that works. Cool. But the guards arrive as the king plans to rediscover his inner knight once more. Oh, come on. You can blow on the old geezer and he'd fall over. Be careful. Some of them might be carrying baseballs. God help you if they're carrying baseballs. Gee, this always works in the movies. Yeah. Oh yeah, because the realism of this moment totally made me forget that this was in fact a movie. That's a good the filmmaking. But Katie gets kidnapped again as her heroes plead for her life at the edge of a cliff. Stop there! Or she flies like a bird. No, take me! Please! Please. Oh, I'm afraid rock and roll will not work this time. You're wrong. It is the great equalizer. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, please, that's mildly annoying. Okay, first of all, the laser on a disc man can't be turned on unless the disc man is closed. Second, how come when the knife falls, he suddenly turns into a ham puppet? I mean, did they have any effects for this movie at all? So our heroes finally return the princess back home to be reunited with her sister. Oh, thank God. Oh, yeah, kiss her. Touch her all over. Now I know what you're thinking, aren't they sisters? Isn't the idea of them making out sick? Nope. Hey, they're actresses first and sisters second, and that's good enough in my porno book. So now it's time to put that evil douche whore in his place. You're looking up extremely well, your highness. If you'll just excuse me, I'll go and get ready for the tournament. Welcome back, Tom. What? You're gonna let him walk after all he's done? You're gonna let him walk after all he's done? Even the idiot knows this makes no sense. The people believe me to be a card. And the guards are still loyal to Belasco. By that time, young knight, when the hour is nigh, we'll nail him. Yes, we'll wait until he kills me in my sleep, murders my daughters, and takes his place on the throne. And then we'll really get him. But all is not finished, as there is still a tournament to be had where the winner gets to win Kate Winslet's hand in marriage. So, of course, Lord Unibrow enters the tournament, putting on his most ridiculous Power Ranger villain suit he could find. Go, go, Power Ranger! Daniel Craig gets in the tournament thinking he can win the day, but sadly he's no match for a shiny piece of jewelry on the bad guy's helmet. What a load of pussy. Yes, it's all part of the plan. He wins the tournament, marries my daughter, rules the kingdom, and then we spring into action. But Calvin thinks he can get Craig back on his feet and keep on fighting. So Kane, how many fingers am I holding up? Just a little off the top. Keep the side burn. Ah, no doubt one of the great James Bond moments. Bond. James Bond. Vodka Martini. Shaken. Not stirred. Just a little off the top. Keep the side burn. Though it looks like Craig, or someone who looks like Craig, has entered back into the tournament. Will he be victorious? His chances look slim. But somehow, shockingly, the knight stays on his horse and keeps on riding. What the fuck? So they go at it again, this time without that pesky head holding it back. So the knight wins the day! And who exactly was he all along? <laughs> what a shock! And a load of shit! I mean, by the contest rules, this makes no sense! He didn't fight anyone else, so it defeats the idea of a tournament! This contest should be null and void! And it turns out Lord Harry Browse has the exact same opinion. Ah! Prepare to meet thy ancestors. But you are my ancestors. Haha! <laughs> -ha! It turns out the mysterious Black Knight shows up to save the day. This is the hero all the town has been talking about who has been bringing them food and money to save the people. So it's decided he should marry the princess. And just who does the Black Knight turn out to be after all this time? Hello, father. So you shall marry yourself. No, it turns out she's allowed to choose whoever she wants to marry. So she wisely chooses the only person who will have a career after this movie, Daniel Craig. <laughs> so all is one as Merlin transports Calvin back to his normal time. Is there nothing I can say or do to make you stay? There are several things you can do to make me stay, you just won't do them! 
So Merlin transports him back and even allows him to finally finish his baseball game the way he wants to, getting rid of his ball of phobia. <laughs> and that's not slow-mo, that's really how fast he runs. And as a special twist, the princess and king are at the game too. How the fuck does this make any sense? Did they ever mention if they time traveled or if they're just descendants of the original characters? Who cares? I don't! Movie's over. RUN! This is the kind of movie you show your kids when you want to punish them. It's stupid, uninventive, and just downright horrible. My only hope is that I can still knock out all memory of this movie by hitting myself on the head repeatedly with the complete works of Shakespeare. A cock in King Arthur's couch. I still have a long way to go. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't blue clues.